What was your personal relationship with Mr. Johnson? Because clearly you admire him for giving, <clears throat> for creating this wonderful egalitarian environment that you worked in. But what was your personal relationship with him? Well, I did, I did <clears throat> not know him at all. Yes. Because uh, <clears throat> I had come in under President Kennedy. But it was, a, a, I think, a rich, warm one. Uh, I'll give you several examples. But one um, was when uh, my wife, Adele, was pregnant with our now 42-year-old. And she was sitting, Dr. Cosby, in a chair like yours, and, and it was in McGeorge Bundy's house. And there were 10 of us that were having dinner. And President and Mrs. She had not met President Johnson came in. And she's way out to here. And he comes over and he says, Hello, I'm Lyndon Johnson. You know, <laughs> yeah, who doesn't know that? <laughs> and that's, oh, that's, that's the way it was. And another occasion, when we were sending up the Voting Rights Act, uh, he had <clears throat> all of us in the White House sort of senior staff had multiple responsibilities. And when he was setting, sending up the Voting Rights Act um, as one of his three lawyers, I was to brief Carl Rowan, which I did on the act coming up with an embargo. And I was having lunch with the late Bob Pierpoint, who was at CBS. And the White House sent a car for me. The president wanted to see me in his office. I was in lunch with Bob. And so I came into the office, and President Johnson had a copy of the Washington Star. And it was a headline by Carl Rowan saying that the president was going to send up the Voting Rights Act. So President Johnson pointed to this and he said, you know, Cliff, and this was a half hour of you know, Cliff, because of this, we're not going to have a Voting Rights Act. The Congress does not like to see ahead of time what's going to be done. And so I'm about six, three, or four, and by the time I finished with this <laughs> lecture, I was about three inches. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, I was trying to mumble my way through this thing, and he was saying how this thing that was a great, great, thing that you were very important in doing and was anything significant to your people and it's just not going to take place Cliff because of what you did and you know you're done. so anyway so I was you know humbly walked out of the room and after a while that night he was briefing uh, members of Congress about the act and he had some of us in the back of the room and that night, he, and he pointed to me and says, there's Cliff Alexander back there. He's one of the great young men in my administration. <laughs> no so you got, that, you got that kind of back and forth with him. But my, the best thing about him, and I've worked for a few presidents, was he treated me like he did the white people. He kicked my ass when he thought he should, and he praised me to the skies when he thought he should. And he showed himself in front of me when he should. I mean, there was one time when we had... Um, I think it was around the time of the Selma March, but I'm not sure of that. But anyway, we had sit-ins in the White House. People came on tour and sat in. So uh, President Johnson sent me and Lee White and Bill Moyers over to talk to the people, to talk them into getting up and walking out peacefully. Well, of course, we went and talked 45 minutes, and they're still sitting there. So he, and I have a picture of this, which I, I love, too. We come back into the office, and he says to us, do I have to do everything? You know, I mean, you, know, you aren't really capable enough of getting a few people to get up and, and leave and do this. So we, of course, explained ourselves. And he said, do I have to bring them into my office? Well, we tried to discourage that act, which he wasn't thinking of doing. And he had a meeting with the NNPA, I think it was, the National Association of Black Publishers, right after that. And he got them that day to vote, these are the black publishers, to pick these demonstrators up and haul them out of the White House, <laughs> and they voted unanimously <laughs> to do that. But that's the kind of the personality it was. And uh, we had, you know, White House dinners that we went to, and one for Princess Margaret, and uh, Adele has a great uh, thought of, I don't think there's a picture of it, of her de dancing with Kirk Douglas at the time. <laughs> and, you know, all that kind of showbiz came, came with it. And yes, of course. we thought to, we tried to, for those events, uh, I saw to it, with the help of Bess Abel, who was the social secretary, that up and coming black political people were invited to those social events so that when the newspaper pictures came out, that helped them. 
in there. Uh, I remember Von Brathwaite from, from yes. Los Angeles and many, many others who uh, were invited to those events and hopefully it helped them in terms of their political ambitions that they were seen uh, in the White House, they were seen with the President, they were seen with an important head of state or whatever. Uh, and trying to cover as many of those bases as possible in that short time was quite important. But Johnson was an important part of that. He was always a facilitator in terms of inclusiveness.